All right, welcome to P7, Chemical and Biological Operations. Task, assume mission-oriented protective posture, level three. Decontaminate your skin and equipment, assuming mop level four. Condition, you are a member of a platoon with a secure fort operating base. You are in mop level two when you suspect a chemical biological attack. Standard, don, clear, and seal the mask within nine seconds and perform all remaining tasks to standard in sequence. Decontaminate your skin using the RES, RSDL in sequence within a two minute period. Decontaminate your individual equipment using a M334 or M295 in sequence within five minutes. Okay, candidate, you have nine seconds to assume mop level three. Are you ready? Zero's on the clock. All right, gas, gas, gas. Step one, stop breathing and close eyes. Step two, remove helmet Put helmet between legs above knees or hold rifle between legs and place helmet on the muzzle. Note, if helmet falls, continue to mask. Step three, take off glasses and place in helmet if applicable. Step four, open the mask area with the non-firing hand. Step five, grasp the mask assembly with firing hand and remove it from the carrier. Step six, place chin in the chin pocket and press the face piece tight against face. Step seven, Hold mask assembly tightly against face. Step eight, grasp the harness tab, pull the harness over and down the, the head as far as possible. Note, ensure the head harness is centered on the crown of the head and the temple straps are approximately parallel to the ground. Step nine, grasp the loose end of the cheek straps one at a time and pull until strap feels tight. Note, both straps should be approximately equal length when complete. The temple and forehead straps have already been adjusted during fitting. Do not tighten. Clear mask assembly. Step one, seal the outlet disc valve by placing one hand over the outlet cover valve vent assembly. Step two, blow out hard to ensure that any contaminated air is forced out around the edges of the face piece. Seal mask assembly. Step one, cover both filter inlet ports with the palms of your hands and breathe in. Step two, ensure mask assembly collapses against the face. Step three, resume breathing. The nine second time standard stops. Give the alarm. Step one, shout gas, gas, gas. Gas, gas, gas. Step two, give the appropriate hand and arm signals per unit SOP. And then close the mask carrier. Next, next task, assume mop level four. The two minute time standard will begin when I tell you to begin. Zero's on the clock. All right, begin. Step one. Seek overhead cover or use a poncho for overhead protection against further contamination. All right, so just go ahead and point up and say overhead cover. Overhead cover. All right. Step two, decontaminate your hands, face, and inside of your mask. A, remove one RSDL packet from your carrying pouch. All right, this is being simulated with wet wipes. B, tear it open quickly at any notch. C, remove the applicator pad from the packet and save the packet as, as the remaining lotion can be added to the applicator pad if required. D, thoroughly scrub the exposed skin of your hand, palm, and fingers with the applicator pad. All right, E, switch the applicator pad to the other hand and repeat the procedure. F, stop breathing, close eyes, grasp and mask beneath chin and pull mask away from the chin enough to allow one hand between the mask and your face. Hold the mask in this position during steps G through M. G, thoroughly ex scrub the exposed skin of your face with lotion from the applicator pad. H, thoroughly scrub across your forehead. I, beginning at one side, scrub up and down across your cheeks, nose, and chin, and closed mouth, avoid ingesting. J, scrub under the chin from the ear along the jawbone to the other ear to coat your skin with lotion. K, turn your hand over and scrub the inside surfaces of the mask that may touch your skin. Be sure to include the drinking tube. Note, do not apply lotion to the lens of the protective mask. The RSDL may cause loss of transparency. L, keep the applicator. M, seal your mask immediately. Clear it, now check it as per steps two and three and assume, assume mop level three above. N, Use the applicator and any remaining lotion in the packet. Without breaking the mask seal, scrub the applicator pad across the forehead, exposed scalp, the skin of the neck, ears, and throat. O, oh, secure the hood.
P. Thoroughly scrub your hands with lotion again, as in the steps 2D and 2E above. Q. Assume mop level 4 by putting on protective gloves and fastening the Velcro. Two minute time standard ends. Step three, decontaminate your equipment using an M295 or M334. Today we have the M295. You have five minutes to decontaminate your equipment. Zero's on the clock. All right, get ready, get set, begin. A, open the M295 at either end where the kit is notched. B, remove one 295 packet from the kit. C, open an M295 packet at notch on the packet. D, remove the individual wipe from the packet and unfold it completely. E, decontaminate all contaminated individual equipment by wiping the surface using sweeping motions away from the body. Take care not to spread contamination to any area that has been visually determined clean. Note, the M334 or 295 individual wipe may leave behind a film on decontaminated surfaces. This film may alter how surface, how certain surfaces, i.e. optics, reflective surfaces, process light. Refer to the decontaminated equipment's TM for cleaning procedures, as some surfaces may require specific procedures to avoid damaging the surface. In the absence of cleaning procedures, a lens cloth has been found to be an effective means of removing any film left behind by the M334 individual wipe. Note, the wipe may be folded or re refolded as necessary to maximize use of the clean areas of the wipe to obtain the proper grip and to ensure even contact pressure. When wiping, pay special attention to areas that are hard to reach, such as cracks, crevices, and absorbent materials. To avoid premature evaporation of the solvent, do not open an, a new M334 packet until needed. F. Dispose of contaminated waste material in accordance with unit SOP and local federal regulations.